Welcome to Let's Talk Night. Our theme tonight is Tis the Season for Great Conversation. Nice. nice. As we enter into the holiday season, we will be around more family Mm. and more friends. So we wanted to talk about how to have great conversations. Nice. Sounds good. Now, you might be thinking, I already know how to have a conversation. Oh, well, no. I'm sure you do. (laughs) But are they great? Mm. Our team tonight, to my right... Yemeserach Germa Mawala, oh. a.k.a. Messer. That's like, right. Like to her right, Ethiopian queen. we have Michelle Collette. <laughs> oh, wow. A.k.a. Michelle. Oh. Okay. Thanks, no nightmare. To her right, batting cleanup, <laughs> we have Jason Seahawk Come on, Collette. Come on, Come on go. A.k.a. Right. J. Cool. All right. All right. Now, you've heard of J. Cole. Well, this is J. Cool. All right. There we go. So, team, <laughs> come on. Yes. What is a great conversation? Mm. For me, a great conversation yeah. is when I can just be myself. I don't yeah. have to perform. Yes. I don't want to feel judged. I can just mm. be myself and oh, feel heard. That's a great conversation for me. Good. That's yeah. good. I think one, a great conversation is one that brings connection, that makes you feel attached. And I also feel like great conversations are ones that help you relax. Yeah. Nice. You know, I think for me, I like conversations where you can laugh and tell stories. It's a great time of the year for that. My dad is this incredible master storyteller. So, awesome. you know, he's one of those guys, as soon as you finish your story, he goes, well, that reminds me of something else <laughs> right. that happened at a right. zoo one time. So, yeah, I think ones where you can enjoy yourself. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. I think also ones that where you can be vulnerable mm-hmm. and also feel accepted, you know, right. and also, you know, in that way, you also get a chance to learn something new yeah. about them. That's you know, it's true. not just all about ourselves. So, nice. I think it's a, right. you know, a great conversation to me is one that influences how we think about life, mm-hmm. yeah. our priorities and our future. You know, when I was 16 years old, I was arrested. Oh, okay. okay. I was put on probation. Yeah. Right and one of the conditions Stop was seeing me. a probation officer for four to six weeks. Okay. So I don't remember the guy's name. What I do remember is he was the first person to inspire me about thinking about the future mm. and how my choices matter. Wow. When I went to college a few years later, I studied sociology because I wanted to become a probation officer wow. so I can work with inner city teenagers. I wanted to help other teenagers that went through what I experienced, wow. all because a guy had a great conversation wow. with That's me great. when I was 16 awesome. years old. Mm. Come on, man. In Proverbs chapter 18, verse 20, it says, good words satisfy like a fine meal. Mm. Yes, good conversations are sure to satisfy. Great scripture. The yeah, Bible good. says, that good conversations are fulfilling and satisfying. Mm. That means they meet our emotional, relational, Mm. and spiritual needs. Mm. Mm -mm. So if great conversations so satisfying and useful, team, Mm -hmm. why don't we have them more often? What do you think? I think think fears is a big roadblock. Yeah, that's right. I think so. I think for me personally, man, fear of rejection Mm. is is a huge aspect of my life, you know? Mm. And I think... In conversations that with Michelle or friends, you That's know, right. I started talking and saying, man, you know, as I start talking, man, are they going to, you know, reject me, what I'm saying? Right, are they true. just like not going to want to hear what I'm saying? And right. that way, like, man, I, you know, stop talking. You know, I don't want to hear these things or blow mm. it off. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah. Also, when I'm talking sometimes to Michelle or others, man, the first, Uh-oh. I'm always Michelle. looking, <laughs> I'm always <laughs> looking, you know, <laughs> I'm always looking at their facial expressions. Right. Yes. Right. And so as I'm talking, I'm seeing their facial expression. And if I, if I see like, like a, a look of confusion, yeah. I immediately go, oh man, I've wow. done something wrong in the conversation. Mm. You know, yeah. they don't want to hear this. I'm confusing them. So wh- there's, so why don't you just stop? Yeah. And mm-hmm. then I, I stop, nice. you know, wow. all because of that fear of rejection. So awesome. that's wow. Up. Wow. Great point. I, I think of the, a lot of different fears, but for me, probably a fear of losing control. Yeah. Um, Philippians 2, 3 and the voice says, don't let selfishness or prideful agendas take over. Embrace true humility and lift your heads to extend love to others. Mm, and nice. for me, that means lifting up my head from my to-do list, oh, yeah. from my project, to-do from what list. I have right in front of me, yeah. to see a conversation as an opportunity, not something that's getting in the way of me getting things done. Nice. Um, there's sometimes I won't have a conversation because I'll just be afraid I won't be able to do what I want to do. Yes. This person may try to change my mind. They might try to change my schedule. 
schedule or my day. And then sometimes Jason and I will have this challenge in conversations that if I have that on my heart and I'm trying to get things done, I'll want the conversation to just speed up, yeah, right? I'll right. rush it along. I'll wrap feel like, and the bottom line yeah, is, right. and what is the point? Yeah, wrap right. it up. I'll do a little hand motions on the side. <laughs> get this going here. So go. that can happen to me sometimes. Nice. All right. For me, I think the biggest one is fear of conflict. Yeah. I am afraid of emotions, my right. own emotions right. and other people's oh, emotions. Yes. So the conversation becomes, how can I minimize any type of negative interaction? Mm. I don't want to get the person mad, I don't want to get mad. How can we make this as peaceful as possible? Right. But what happens when I do that? Two things happen. Either I get really deceitful, so I don't share what I really think and feel. So it could just become yeah. a really right. superficial yeah. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Or I can become the lawyer. Scott calls me that oh. sometimes. I have my case. I'm defending my lawyer. case. Yeah, building I'm defend- your case. Building, building my case and defending myself. I and become you really defensive. Yes. You build the case. Right. Yes. <laughs> So it becomes Probation all about <laughs> my 10 year list Probation of why I'm right yes, versus connecting. Right. So, and then I can blame you or other people. It's because you're angry or it's because of how you respond. Mm. Instead yeah. of looking at myself and saying, man, I'm really unloving in this right. conversation. Wow. Yeah. A good scripture, if you're like me and you're afraid of conflict is first <clears throat> John four eighteen. Mm. It says no fear exists mm. where love, where his love is. Rather perfect love gets rid of fear because fear involves punishment. The person who lives in fear doesn't have perfect love. Mm. Nice. It's good. You know, I think for me, uh, I, uh, fear of intimacy is a big one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, one of the most com- uncomfortable things for me to talk about is love. Yeah. And I would rather talk about mistakes. Mm-hmm. I would rather talk about my failures. Yeah. I would rather right. talk about my anger. I'd rather talk about sin. Yeah. yeah. I'd rather talk about any subject matter. <laughs> than actually talk about my need for love, yes. my desire for love. Right. And so I think the clo- I want the closeness, yeah. but I'm afraid to put myself out there. Right. And so that that really um, has a major Point. impact on, on That's my good. conversations. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah. I think it's really great to consider these, you know, fears or yeah. reasons why we don't have these conversations. That's yeah. right. You know, because, you know, it's important to have them and you realize, why can't I have them? So sometimes yeah. taking yeah. the time to have these talks with a friend or, you know, with your spouse or with Mm -hmm. a roommate or something like that. Hey, what prevents me from having these talks? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because I believe everybody needs to reflect on these things, especially if we're here in the holidays. Yes. We're going to be around other family and friends. You know, hey, what's going to keep me from having these talks? So talk about it at this time. What are these fears? What are these things that are preventing us from having these talks? Because we don't want to let them keep us from having those conversations. What helps us have great conversations? Nice. You know, I, I think uh, the first thing that, that helps for me to have uh, great conversations is you always have to start with God. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's right. And uh, I think, you know, we just discussed the fears that you're mentioning. Yeah. And, you know, there's a scripture in Exodus 33, verse 11. <clears throat> it says, the eternal spoke with Moses face to face, just as a friend speaks to another friend. I think starting with God is very important mm-hmm. because... To address That's those good. fears that we just mentioned, that yeah. we all just right. shared right. about, yeah. we cannot overcome those fears. The fear of intimacy, yeah. uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the fear of disappointments, any, any of these kinds yeah. of fears that we have yeah. without spending the time with God. Right. Mm-hmm. Great That's point. Good. I think another thing is checking our motives. Like, mm. e- why am I even having this right, conversation? Right. Yeah. I think I sometimes we jump into the conversation yeah. and we don't even check to see why am I, what is my motive? What is my goal? Right behind the conversation. First Corinthians 14, one, it says, let love be your highest goal. Is the goal closeness? Is the goal connection? Is the goal just understanding and listening to the person? Mm. I remember as a single student, I, you know, I grew up with no brothers. You know, I grew up in a household with a lot of women. Mm. So I learned really how to develop close friendships from the guys, from the brothers in my campus ministry. They became like my brothers, really. And they taught me how to develop a great friendship that led me to having good conversations yeah. and great friendship with you. That's right. So I think great. sometimes if you're a single girl, mm. you can miss out on a great learning opportunity yeah. Yeah. if you if you don't really develop these great conversations with right. guys around you. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I, 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 yes. good. I think also, <clears throat> you know, I became a Christian at 22. Uh, you know, I just finished college. And um, I, I think when, when, you know, talking to girls 
and learning how to interact with 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 girls yeah. was very different for me. Mm. So before I became a Christian, the motive and everything I did was about using. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything was using. Right. I had no there was no other world wow. than right. using girls. Mm -hmm. When I became a Christian, I started learning that relationships with girls uh, are meant to, you know, be friends, yeah. get to know them. Yeah. So uh, I remember having to learn how to be interested, not just in the ones that I thought was attractive, yeah. but in gir with girls in general. Yeah. And so I remember going on dates with girls uh, just to serve right, and, okay. and, and just want to give to. And I think sometimes even as young single guys, we only want to talk to the girls that, 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 that we want mm. attention from. Mm -hmm. And we're uncomfortable just being around girls. Yeah. So I think if, if you know, uh, I think the motive parts teaches us if, we, if our motives are right and we start with God, I think we can learn how to be comfortable right. by making friends with girls versus just talking to yeah. the ones that, yeah. Yeah. that we want attention to from. Build a friendship. Right. That's right. <laughs> Not yeah. to try to get what it's you want. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then but if you're married, let's talk. Can we talk? Yes. Can the code word for I have a whole bunch of bitterness oh, yes. I have stored oh, up. Oh, that is a scary and phrase to husbands. It's a venting session or it's a blaming session. Okay, Scott's looking at me now. Yes, yes, it's happened in our marriage. And uh, But we can avoid it. Yeah, then you can right. avoid just talking all together yeah. oh, because it can feel like, oh, do I want to even go right. through this, right? right. Exactly. And, um, and then we can become just very logistical conversation yeah. people, right? About yes. the kids, about the finances, to about the to-dos, yeah, right? right? And uh, this is a good scripture for checking our motives, especially mm. for married couples. Okay. Ephesians 4.29, it says, don't let any evil talk come out of your mouth. Say only what will help wow, to build good. others up and meet their needs. Mm. Then what you say will help those who listen. Nice. So when love is our highest goal, it just, we speak, we can even share hard truths in our relationship, but yeah. it doesn't have to be crushing. It can become about helping one another yeah. and meeting yeah. each other's needs. Yeah, mm. Building awesome. them up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. I think another aspect of good conversations is listening to understand. Yeah. Um, not listening to get to your point yep. or thinking about something else when somebody's speaking or coming into a conversation. I've done this before already thinking I know everything there is to know about yes. this person, but actually listening to understand the person. And, and there's a scripture in James 1.19 in the Amplified that says, understand Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear, a careful, thoughtful listener, slow to speak. Nice. Oh, it's hard. A speaker of carefully chosen words and slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. And I, this is something I'm working on personally right now, working yeah. on listening and listening more in my marriage. But I can think of conversations that I've had in my life with people who have helped me, friends mm. that really did listen. Yeah. Nice. And I can remember that. It really stood out to me. I mean, there's different times that I've tried to make difficult decisions, yeah. right? Or mm. hard. We all have decisions yeah. to make. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we try to make these decisions alone rather than I need a conversation. Yes. Right. But some of the conversations I had, I can remember um, we have two awesome daughters right. now, but we struggled with infertility for years is very challenging. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a conversation with a friend who was encouraging me about adoption. Yeah. Um, Jason's adopted and he had helped me with the idea of it, yeah. but I was still really afraid. Right. Um, and I had a friend that talked to me about it, but she really just listened. Yeah. She wow. asked questions like, what are you afraid of? And what are you thinking will happen? And mm. I just didn't know how the attachment was going to happen. There was a lot I was yeah. afraid of. Some sure. of the things I didn't realize until I had somebody ask me questions. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you realize right. things with somebody who's just a good listener. Right. Um, and the more I talked to her, the more I started to realize, wow, it's just yeah. fear. There's things I'm not trusting about yes. with God. And, and, you know, she didn't just listen after she really listened though. She was actually also able to share her experience and share scriptures. Right. And nice. sometimes, you know, a person is more able to listen to those things once you've really listened to yeah, them. When so they feel when they feel hurt. Exactly. Yeah. Once yeah. you feel hurt, once I felt heard, I was more trusting. Mm -hmm. I was open to what she thought. That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. That's great. I think one more that uh, is important for us to all consider is like leading with vulnerability. Ooh. You know, That's and uh, it's the holidays and sometimes we're not always around our family yes. uh, during the year. And but you're going to get a chance to see them over the holidays, perhaps. Yeah. Right. Or maybe zooming and our little interactions. It's like, man, I need to have this conversation, but yeah. to be vulnerable. Yeah. Also with friends, true. you know, we have friends, you know, singles or whatnot. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, I'm going to, you know, build this friendship, you know, have a conversation to lead with vulnerability. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a scripture in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8, mm. NIV. 
It says, so we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Mm. I can remember a time where I needed to have a difficult conversation yeah. uh, with a family member, right? Yeah, my sibling, right. you know, and, uh, you know, growing up, there were some experiences of abuse. And so, you know, yeah. we both went through some abusive ex- experiences and there was, you know, uh, ones that, you know, uh, I, I, I know I felt ashamed of yeah. and felt, you know, afraid yeah. of talking about. Yeah. And I imagine Another. she also had the same, you know, feeling of guilt or yeah. maybe shame or such like that. But years went by and not having those conversations. Yeah. And I said, man, we don't know what to do about this. But then, you know, uh, you know, learning to talk to Michelle and talk to friends and yeah. pray, I was always thinking about more of myself and that was pre- preventing me from being vulnerable, you know, nice. but yeah. then when I prayed about, you know, our relationship and, and then started, God helped me start to think more about her her yeah. more yeah. than myself right. that, nice. that led into like, Hey, I need to care, you know, right. like, uh, care more about, you know, her needs. And so, you know, that helped me to like make the conversation happen, mm. you know, nice. so I initiated it and I said, Hey, I know that, you know, these experiences happen and I wanted to be able to make sure I, you know, clear the air, you know, mm-hmm. I want to make sure there's no, you know, hard feelings, nothing against these things, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, got forgiveness and that experience. And I remember in that conversation that she expressed so much gratitude yeah, for, thank you for calling. Thank yeah. you nice. for bringing that up. You know, uh, yes, I have been feeling those mm-hmm. things for many years. And then that you called me, helped me to just yeah. you know talk about those things and get That's resolved. Great. And she just, and as we were ending the conversation, she goes, I just want to tell you, I'm really grateful you're my brother, and I just yeah. want to tell you, I love you a lot. You yeah. know, and that's what I think that vulnerability conversation nice. led to in those ways. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there. I like what you said, Jay, about uh, and, and I like your scripture mm-hmm. because uh, you know it, it, you know you talk about leading with vulnerability, but the scripture that that you refer to about sharing the gospel, mm-hmm. but it says we should share our lives as well. Yeah, I think sometimes we don't work on the relationship, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And I think yes. sometimes it just becomes about getting together and talking. You know, let's let's just share the Bible or yeah. scripture. I'm not saying those things That's are bad, right. That's right. but I think actually learning how to build an ongoing relationship yes. with people is also very important in having great conversations yeah. or totally even agree. having conversations outside those uh, yeah. outside those times yes That's exactly right mm-hmm. yeah all right it's been great having a conversation about having great conversations <laughs> yeah. today you know and realizing our goal is should be able to be able to encourage each other's faith yeah you know in closing there's a scripture romans right. 1 verse 12 easy to read version that says i mean that i want us to help each other with the faith that we have nice mm-hmm. your faith will help me and my faith will help you. Mm-hmm. Nice. You know, I hope that all of us can learn from today, learn from the scriptures and rely on God to have these great conversations over the holidays and with your family and with friends. And I hope you have an incredible holiday season. Thanks so much for tuning in and have an awesome day. <laughs>